He was a walking, talking badass who had served with the Marines for innumerable years. The man who knew what the ladies liked and a close companion to the Master Chief and Cortana. He was Sergeant Major Avery Jr. Johnson. Born sometime in the late 25th century, Avery Johnson was raised in the Greater Chicago Industrial Zone, a megacity that had grown from the historical city of Chicago, encompassing large parts of former states Illinois, Wisconsin, and Indiana. When Avery was but six, his family broke up, leaving him in the loving care of his Aunt Marcille. At the age of 19, Johnson enlisted with the UNSC Marine Corps. An unknown time after enlisting, Johnson volunteered to participate in the UNSC's Orion Project. The project's goal was to create super soldiers that could be unleashed against the rising insurrection. Very little of Johnson's activities with the Orion Project are known, but in 2502, he participated in Operation Kaleidoscope on the Colony of Harvest. There, Johnson assassinated Gerald Mulkey Ander, a leader in a movement known as the People's Occupation Government. In 2506, the Orion Project, despite some successes, was brought to an end. The 165 surviving candidates were reassigned to other Spec Ops units. While some exhibited debilitating psychological and physical effects, many, including Avery Johnson, were able to remain active in the field far longer than baseline humans. By 2524, Staff Sergeant Avery Johnson was part of Operation Trebuchet, an ongoing counterinsurgency op across many of the outer colonies, and the constant fighting against his fellow man had begun to wear on Johnson. On July 16th of that year, Johnson, along with fellow Staff Sergeant Nolan Byrne, were deployed to Casbah, the capital of tribute, for a counterinsurgency op. Unfortunately, the mission went south and 38 civilians in a Marine platoon were killed via suicide bomb. Due to his hesitation to snipe the bomber, Johnson blamed himself. Upon returning home on August 10th, Johnson found his aunt had died of natural causes while he was gone. His grief quickly got him drunk and lying in a gutter. The next morning, he was found by a Marine Corps recruiter and informed of a new assignment on the Colony of Harvest, courtesy of Oni agent Jalan Al-Signi. On Harvest, he, along with Sergeant Byrne, were instructed to train a colonial militia. In secret, the two had also been sent to root out insurgency forces suspected in the disappearance of DCS freighters. During a counterinsurgency op, the two had the first encounter with the Covenant in the form of Ruti and Kegyar. Upon returning to Harvest, the two sergeants prepared their militia for a suspected alien invasion. On February 3, 2525, Harvest Tiara Space Station made long-range contact with the Covenant cruiser Rapid Conversion. Contact with the colony was lost soon after. On February 11th, formal first contact was made between humans and Covenant. While humanity had hoped for peace, the Covenant simply wanted the planet for what they believed was a treasure trove of Forerunner artifacts. It wasn't long before talks broke down and the first battle of Harvest broke out. Though the planet would ultimately be lost, Johnson, Byrne, and Al Signy were able to evacuate most of Harvest's population. Their time together had brought Johnson and Al Signy close, and the two formed a relationship. Oh, I know what the ladies like though the longevity of this relationship remains unknown. His time on Harvest would mark Johnson's first meeting with the future chieftain of the Gerald Hanai, Tartarus. It was also where he met Private Wallace Jenkins. The majority of Sergeant Johnson's time after Harvest is unknown, though it is believed he took part in the Battle of Paris IV in 2549. What is known is that Johnson and Private Jenkins were both present during the Fall of Reach. On August 30th, 2552, Johnson, Jenkins, and Privates Pacenti and O'Brien were deployed to reach Gamma Station with other Marine forces for a search-and-destroy mission. Most were wiped out, but Johnson, Jenkins, Pacenti, and O'Brien were saved by Spartan Team Blue and evacuated to the Pillar of Autumn. The Autumn soon after fled as Reach finally fell, making a seemingly random slipspace jump out system. On September 19th, less than a month later, the crews arrived in the Soel system and re-engaged the forces they had attempted to flee. When the Covenant enacted boarding action rather than destroying the ship, Marine forces were again forced to engage and eventually evacuate. Once on the ring, Johnson and his squad found themselves under immediate Covenant threat. Thankfully, Spartan 117, the Master Chief, and Cortana came to their aid. Once local Covenant forces were eliminated, Johnson and his squad were airlifted to Alpha Base, a mesa containing numerous Forerunner structures and caverns that Marine forces had captured from the Covenant. Later that day, Johnson and his squad would join the Master Chief and Cortana in their assault on the Covenant capital ship, the Truth and Reconciliation, to rescue Captain Jacob Keyes. The mission was a success, and after a brief stop at Alpha Base, Johnson deployed on another mission under Captain Keyes' command. While the Spartan and Marine squad stormed the beach of the silent cartographer, Keyes and Johnson investigated what they believed was a weapons cache. To their horror, the facility turned out to be housing a parasitic life form known as the Flood. 
While his men were consumed by the alien parasite and turned into grotesque forms, Johnson noticed the Flood didn't seem to, in his own words, have a taste for him. Though he didn't know it, this was a lucky side effect of his Orion augmentations. Johnson proceeded to fight his way out of the facility. He eventually met up with Lieutenant Elias Haverson, Corporal Locklear, and Petty Officer 2nd Class Sheila Pulaski. The four managed to escape Halo just before it was destroyed. Soon after, they met up with the Master Chief and Cortana and together, hijacked the Covenant DDS-class carrier Ascendant Justice and escaped from incoming Covenant forces. The group briefly returned to Reach at the suggestion of John 117, where they discovered many surviving Spartan II's and Dr. Catherine Halsey. Over the course of events, the group discovered that the Covenant had learned the location of Earth and, at Johnson's suggestion, attacked a Covenant space station, the Unyielding Hierophant, dealing a massive first strike against the Covenant and virtually annihilating the 500-ship invasion fleet. Unfortunately, many more lives were lost and they had only delayed the inevitable. John 117, Fred 104, Linda 058, Will 034, and Sergeant Avery Johnson returned to Earth to warn of the imminent Covenant threat. Upon returning, the Spartans and Johnson were debriefed, Johnson was promoted to Sergeant Major, and the Chief and Johnson attended an award ceremony for their actions. The ceremony was short-lived, however, as a Covenant fleet, led by the Prophet of Regret, arrived at Earth. Johnson and the Chief were deployed from the UNSC in Amberclad to Earth when a carrier broke through the planet's orbital defenses. While the Spartan fought across the ground, Johnson provided support from the air. When the Prophet tried to flee, the two returned to Amberclad and pursued the ship. On November 2nd, both ships arrived near Installation 05, Delta Halo, and a new battle broke out. As before, the Chief led forces on the ground while Johnson provided support from above. When they discovered the Prophet's plan to activate Halo, the Chief was sent to assassinate the Prophet while Johnson met up with Commander Keys to retrieve the Ring's Index. Getting through the Sentinel Wall was not easy, but in the end, the two were able to retrieve the Icon. Unfortunately, they were ambushed by the Sunkhili Arbiter and the Index was then taken by Tartarus and his Brutes. The two humans were brought to High Charity along with the Index. Tartarus was ordered to activate the ring and Johnson and Keys were brought back to Halo. Keys would be used to activate the ring while Johnson and some of his Marines were slated for execution. Thankfully, the Arbiter appeared again, this time fighting the Jerohanai. Taking advantage of the situation, Johnson forged an uneasy alliance with the Arbiter and the two were able to kill Tartarus and stop the activation of Halo. Unfortunately, the sudden deactivation of the ring put the entire array on standby and while they had worked to stop the activation, the Prophet of Truth had fled to Earth. Johnson, Miranda, and the remaining human forces joined the Arbiter as they hurried back to the Soul System to stop Truth. Thankfully, due to Spartan 117's presence on Truth's ship, the group arrived at Earth before the Hierarch. Upon returning, Johnson was briefly given permission to question a Huragok engineer that had been captured following the initial invasion of Earth. The talks were short-lived, however, when the Prophet of Truth and Spartan 117 entered Earth's atmosphere. The Spartan bailed during re-entry and Johnson personally led the forces that recovered him. The group then met up with what remained of the UNSC to form a plan of attack against Truth. While the Master Chief, supported by Marines and the Arbiter, took out anti-air emplacements, Johnson provided logistical support from the air and would do so throughout the Battle of Voy. Unfortunately, despite their best efforts, the UNSC could not stop Truth from activating the portal to the Ark. When the UNSC resolved to chase after Truth, Johnson, the Chief, and Commander Keys would take the UNSC forward onto Dawn through the portal and, accompanied by their new Sunghili allies, do everything it took to stop Truth. After establishing a presence on the Ark, UNSC and Sunghili forces went to work to bust through a shield protecting the central citadel. While the Chief led a group of Marines and the Arbiter led his Sunghili against two towers, Johnson led a third group against a third tower. While the Chief and Arbiter were successful, Johnson was ambushed by Gerald Hanai, captured, and brought to the Citadel where the Prophet of Truth planned to use him to activate the Halo Array. The Chief and Arbiter teamed up to stop this, but when they reported that they still had a ways to go, Commander Keys made her way into the Citadel to rescue the Sergeant. Facing overwhelming odds, she and Johnson opted for death. Unfortunately, she was killed by Truth before the plan could be enacted and, now wrought with grief, Johnson was unable to resist when Truth forced his hand on the activation panel for the Array. Luckily, the Chief and Arbiter fought their way through Truth's defenses in time to stop the Array and kill the Mad Prophet. Johnson gathered Miranda's body and made ready to depart when they were suddenly attacked by the Gravemine and Flood. Johnson's Pelican managed to make it out, but he was forced to leave the Chief and Arbiter behind. Thankfully, the two were more than capable of handling the Flood, and to everyone's surprise, discovered that the Ark had a replacement in Installation 04. While the Chief retrieved Cortana and the activation index she held from the remains of High Charity, Johnson and the Arbiter prepared the remaining human and Sanghili forces for evacuation aboard the Sanghili assault carrier, Shadow of Intent. 
The Orbiter then made his way into High Charity to help the Chief out, while Johnson prepared to meet the two on the new Halo ring with the UNSC forward under Dawn. Johnson made his way to the ring's control room while the Chief and Arbiter made theirs, meeting up just outside. Once safely inside, Johnson took Cortana's data chip while the Master Chief and Arbiter guarded the door, preparing to activate the ring. He was informed by Monitor 343 Guilty Spark that the ring would need a few more days before it was ready, but when Johnson opted to fire the ring anyway, Spark suddenly attacked him, the Chief, and the Arbiter. Though the Chief and Arbiter were able to take out the rampant Monitor, Johnson had been mortally wounded and passed away on the ring. Though he died, Johnson's actions ensured humanity and the Sangheili a future free of the Flood and allowed the Chief and Arbiter a way off the ring. Sergeant Major Avery Jr. Johnson had a history that spanned the entire Human Covenant War. He fired the first shots in early 2525 at Kigiar Pirates and survived to see the war end with the death of the Prophet of Truth. He was one of the few people to befriend the Master Chief, a Spartan, and would have a lasting impact on all who met him. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.